And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs. A time when a special man came forward, a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear, a man whom they took prisoner and hid away, a man whose name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years, a story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam, Olam shall, shall you hey wav hey. Wav hey. The, universe the universe of, of you, you hey wav, wav, wav hey. hey. Brought, Brought to you by, by the nation of you of hey wav, wav, wav hey. Working for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death. This is your choice in this, the year 6003, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the day of judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world, and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse, and it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase, and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places, and we are witnessing today gross misconduct, and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end the Messiah would be revealed, and at that time he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah, is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh, featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgressed the laws of yud heh wav -Heh and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Heh. In order to have peace, love, and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh wav -Heh. All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count, and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of God yud heh wav -Heh, then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever. 
We invite you to study along with us. However, in order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom. My name is Ben Kayo Bethel Yishraya. Yahweh put Adam in the Garden of Eden and gave him the first two commandments ever given to man, which were to dress and to keep it. In our continuing series of the commandments of Yahweh, we are still on our course of singling out the family of Adam from the perspective of the word watch and its relationship to the word keep. Yahweh promised to send through the seed of Adam one prophet like unto Moses who would return or restore us, the children of Israel, to the Garden of Eden, the Promised Land. In order to be able to identify this one prophet, it was written that he would fulfill all that the prophet said. One such prophecy is written in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, which says that he would be the first begotten of the dead. Last week, we separated the compound word begotten into two parts, be and gotten. We learned that the prefix be means to make, and make means to cause to happen or be experienced by someone. From the definitions of the word make, we learned that the one promised to come would be in fact the first to demonstrate that he is capable of producing or bringing about his own divine condition, and that he would be the first to possess the spirit by which a guiding intelligence from within himself is able to or capable of achieving or bringing about his divine state of mind. From the definition of the word make, we also learned that the one prophet prophesied to come would be the first to have both physical and spiritual knowledge or awareness of his divinity. In addition, we learned that the one promised to come would be the first to present himself to the public over radio and on television as the child that was to be born. We asserted with objective evidence that Yahweh ben Yahweh is the first to make or cause himself to be born into divine consciousness. In fact, we even showed you in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 where he was born in the USA as prophesied. The word make from the prefix be proves that Yahweh ben Yahweh is self-induced, self-educated, and self-born. And not only that, he is also self-published, self-manifested, and self-proclaimed, the one prophet prophesied to come to restore or return us the children of Israel, to the Garden of Eden, the Promised Land. Now today, we shall examine the intrinsic parts of gotten, and we are going to show you a twofold meaning of gotten. Stated in Webster's New World College Dictionary, 4th edition, copyright 1999, on page 613, the word gotten is defined as a past participle of get. In Random House College Dictionary, Revised Edition, copyright 1988, on page 972, 
past is defined as having existed or occurred in a time previous to the present. According to Webster's New World College Dictionary, third edition, copyright 1997, on page 985, participle from the grammar definition is a verbal form having some characteristics and functions of both verb and adjective. In English, the past participle commonly ends in ed or en. Therefore, the past participle gotten, as it is being used here, is expressing something that existed or occurred in a time previous to the present. The participle is a verbal form having some characteristics and functions of both a verb and an adjective. Now, let us carefully examine some of the characteristics and functions of a participle from both the verb and the adjective points of view. First, the verb. On the authority of Webster's New World College Dictionary, on page 1,482, a verb by definition means any of a class of words expressing action and usually constituting the main element of a predicate. Before moving on, let us stop here and get an understanding of expressing, constituting, and element. In the Synonym Finder by J.I. Rodale, copyright 1978, on page 383, express, the root word of expressing, means the same as to tell. On page 221, constitute, the root word of constituting, is equivalent to establish. And on page 342, element is synonymous to part. Now, so far, we see that the characteristics and functions of a participle from a verbal form of a verb is talking about a class of words that is telling action which establishes the main part of a predicate. Let us continue. So what is a predicate? Stated in Merriam-Webster's Dictionary of Basic English, copyright 1995, on page 454, a predicate is the part of a sentence that tells what is said about the subject. Thus, when a participle in a verbal form has the characteristics and functions of a verb, it is talking about a class of words that is telling action which establishes the main part of what is being said about the subject, Yahweh ben Yahweh, the first to be gotten of the dead. As you can see, gotten as a past participle has many hidden meanings from a grammatical aspect and only diligent research can reveal its intrinsic parts. Next, let us carefully examine some of the characteristics and functions of a participle as an adjective. Referenced in Webster's New World College Dictionary on page 16, an adjective is defined as any of a class of words used to modify a noun. In the Synonym Finder by J.I. Rodell, on page 743, modify means the same as qualify. And on page 971, qualify is synonymous to describe. Thus, the characteristics and functions of a past participle from the verbal form of both a verb and an adjective is talking about a class of words that is telling about action which establishes the main part of what is being said about the subject Yahweh ben Yahweh, 
while at the same time describing the behavior and the work of Yahweh ben Yahweh that existed or occurred in a time previous to the present. Now going back to our original definition, we see that gotten from the perspective of a verb is a class of words expressing action while this same class of words is describing the subject. Obviously, this class of words belongs to somebody. And to clarify this statement, let us go to the authority, the Gregg Reference Manual, 8th edition, copyright 1996, on page 156, which says, the of phrase as a whole expresses possession. The phrase of words verifies that these words belong to a class. According to the American Heritage College Dictionary, copyright 1993, on page 258, class means a group containing members seen as having certain traits in common. On page 849, a member is described as one that belongs to a group or organization. Traits is synonymous to personalities. Thus, when the verbal form of a past participle has the characteristics and functions of both a verb and an adjective, it is talking about people belonging to a group or organization having the same personalities. These people talked about actions that existed or occurred in a time previous to the present, and what they said reflected upon the behavior and the work of Yahweh ben Yahweh, the first to be gotten of the dead. In order to establish the actions voiced by these people, we must go back to the so-called actions that they said existed or occurred in a time previous to the present. Gotten is the past participle of get. Therefore, the verb get will describe these actions. Next week, we will examine the intrinsic parts of the verb get. As we continue our course of singling out the family of Adam from the perspective of the word watch and its relationship to keep, further proving that Yahweh ben Yahweh is the first to be gotten of the dead, the one prophet whom Yahweh has raised up like unto Moses, who shall return or restore us, the children of Israel, to the Garden of Eden, the promised land. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here. I bear, I bear witness, witness to you today, today that, that the Mahdi is, is here. I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Enlightened One is here. I bear witness to you today that the One all religion has been speaking of for almost 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week as we continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh.
What is the Tetragrammaton? What are the laws and teachings of Yahweh ben Yahweh? What is the meaning of the crucifixion? What are the laws of the covenant? How can you work to balance justice? How can you hear the voice of Yahweh? Learn the answers to these questions and many more on the internet when you visit the new Yahweh ben Yahweh website. The address is www.yahwehbenyahweh.com. of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years, he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. The scriptures prove over and over again that Yahweh visits the earth in physical form. For example, Yahweh walked in the garden in the cool of the day. Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. O children of Israel, it was promised to us that Yahweh would surely visit us and bring us out of this land of America unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Genesis chapter 50 verse 24. We are witnesses to the fact that Yahweh ben Yahweh is here in the flesh as the Son. Wherefore, Yahweh ben Yahweh is saying unto the children of Israel, I am Yahweh, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of your oppressors, and I will rid you out of your spiritual and mental bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I, Yahweh ben Yahweh, will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am Yahweh, your God which will bring you out from under the burdens of your oppressors. And I will bring you into the land which I did swear to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it to you for a heritage. I am Yahweh. Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. And it shall come to pass that Yahweh shall bring the children of Israel unto their land. Exodus chapter 12, verse 51. We must come to know and understand that it is a good land which Yahweh our God has given us. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 25. Numbers chapter 13, verse 27. Remember that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection 
It, all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> that just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleikum. The scriptures prove over and over again that Yahweh visits the earth in physical form. The very presence of Yahweh ben Yahweh on the earth today is yet another example of this fact. For Yahweh ben Yahweh is the completion of the divine promise Yahweh made with our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, wherein Yahweh promised Abraham that he would come himself and deliver us out of the hands of our oppressors and bring us into a land of our own, a land that is the glory of all lands. Thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Ye Kardesh Shemayaka, Tavo Malkuteaka, Ye Ase Razonka, Ki Vashemayim Kain Baaretz, Et Lekum Kukainu, Tain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu, Al Kati Enu, Ki Moshe Solkin, Gamanak Nu, La Koteom La Nu, Veal Tefi Enu, Lede Nisayom, Kim Kal Senu, Min Hara, Kelaka, Hamam Laha, Veha Givara, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Sila. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father Yahweh and his Son Yahweh bin Yahweh love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleikum. To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, ask about the special discount on the Kingdom of Yahweh Heaven. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the Divine Mind of Yahweh Ben Yahweh on the Internet at the address on the screen.